he was voted the funniest lawyer in New Jersey. His name is John Bramnick, and I want you to give him a huge Jersey welcome. John Bramnick, funniest lawyer in New Jersey. Competition's pretty light. I want to start off by telling you I got some bad news and I got some good news. The bad news is you paid money to see a lawyer tell jokes. <laughs> the good news is I ain't getting paid either, so none of you are paying for me. To add some insult to injury, uh, you're also paying to see a New Jersey politician tell jokes. That means you can trust everything I say, uh, but feel okay about this because last week I took an ethics course. You're going to be shocked, but in New Jersey, politicians have to take ethics. I have no idea why. They have a woman who's the ethics officer in Trenton. That's all she does all day. She's very busy. So you have to go for your side. Her name is Marcy Hockman. So last Tuesday, she goes, Assemblyman, step into my office. That's not good. She goes, are you ready for your ethics training? I said, I am. She said, rule number one, you can't take cash in an envelope. I said, I never take the envelope. <laughs> she said, rule number two, no joking during ethics training. I said, I'm not joking. <laughs> so it appears that I'll be back at ethics training. Now, I'm gonna tell you this stuff because it's gonna come out in the newspaper on Monday. On the way here, I was actually pulled over by a New Jersey state trooper. License and registration, please. I cooperated. I took out my license. <laughs> it didn't seem to have much an effect on this state trooper. He called other state troopers. Now there were six state troopers behind me because they like when they give a ticket to a politician. And they take their time, if you've ever been pulled over. Slowly they write your name. So I had a lot of time. So I figured I would look at these signs, the road signs, because part of my job is to make your life easier. So I saw this sign, press pound 77. If you see aggressive driving, I got nothing to do. Might as well call. So I press pound 77. Here's what I get. You have reached New Jersey's aggressive driving hotline. Jim McGreevy, governor. <laughs> if you're calling about your own aggressive driving, press one. If you're calling about the guy in the left lane doing 100, there's little we can do. But if it makes you feel any better, press two. Then it says, all of the funds for the aggressive driving hotline have been discontinued, but we don't have the money to take the signs down. Thank you for calling the aggressive driving hotline. So I'm still waiting for the trooper. So I start to look at these other signs. One says, speed check by helicopter. I've been driving 45 years, never been pulled over by a helicopter. I saw a UFO in touching last week, but it seemed to just go away. There's these signs, you see them over and over. And here's my favorite. I was in South Jersey. There's actually a sign that says, don't pick up hitchhikers, state prison close by. Five minutes later, there's a sign that says, it's now safe to pick up hitchhikers. <laughs> when I was a kid and we had to go to the movies, you turn to your friend, hey Jeff, well, what, how are you getting the movies? Well, hitch. Nobody's hitching anymore. It's morphed into something else. It's called Uber. <laughs> now for six bucks, they'll send a weirdo to pick you up. <laughs> and now you got Lyft, Lyft to competition. Lyft's entire advertising campaign is, we have less weird, left, <laughs> we have less weirdos than Uber. That's their entire thing. So I might as well, before we get started on some other things, I'm a big fan on law enforcement. I actually see the former attorney general here, so I want to speak briefly about law enforcement. If you recall about a year ago, 
these terrorists tried to blow up the New Jersey shore, Seaside Park. That's like sacred ground. Think about this for a moment. These terrorists are so stupid, they wanted to blow up the Jersey shore. We caught them like in two hours. In Linden, they just laid down on the ground. So we're gonna go Jersey on these terrorists. You know where the tunnels and the bridges, you got the Port Authority police? They're out. We hired the squeegee guys. <laughs> Tell them they don't have probable cause when they're looking at you for your shit. <laughs> and for the airports, those TSA guys, they're out. They can't find a bomb if you hand it to them. <laughs> We're gonna put three New Jersey moms at Newark Airport. <laughs> they go like this. That guy, he's no good. When has your mom ever been wrong about a guy? That guy's no good. So I, I should tell you a little bit about myself because in 2021, I'll be running for governor of the state of New Jersey. Thank you very much. So I figure I'd get my bad shit out tonight because if it comes out now, by the time 2021 comes around, either you forget about it or it won't be a big deal. So I'm gonna tell you right now, I do not read any books whatsoever. I do not read books, especially the classics. I don't read Tale of Two Cities, any of this, any of this Shakespeare stuff. One page, I got no idea what these people are talking about. I fall right to sleep. But I do watch a lot of TV. I watch TV day in and day out. I only watch certain kind of shows though. I watch the shows where they're looking for that Loch Ness monster, or they're looking for Bigfoot. 25 years, they're looking for this Bigfoot character. Not one decent picture, just some squiggly thing in the distance. But they always have some lady who goes on TV and says, I was taken out of my bed in the middle of the night. I was taken up to a spacecraft. They took my blood out, they put it back, they analyzed it, they put me right back on my bed. Those people never from New Jersey, never. They're always from like Arkansas. Can you imagine if they took Tony from Bayonne out of his bed in the middle of the night? There'd be three missing Martians, dead, gone. I'm just sick and tired of the fact that I do all kinds of stupid shit. So I'm gonna go immediately to my good stuff. I grew up in Plainfield. And my dad had a store called Lazar's. Lazar's sold Halloween costumes. You know what I was for Halloween? Whatever didn't sell. <laughs> My mother used to come home and say, you're gonna be Batman. I said, I hate Batman. She said, so does everybody else, put on the costume. <laughs> then I started my law practice in Plainfield. When I tell you that I knew nothing about the practice of law back then in 1984, zero, nothing. First case comes in, murder, first degree. I shouldn't have taken the case. <laughs> Tried the case, jury comes back five minutes. Guilty, first degree murder. I turned to my client, I said, Mom? <laughs> so when you run for governor, you gotta immediately put your family right out front. So I'm gonna tell about my family. Let me start with my son. My son, when he was 16, should have been working down at Washington for the CIA, or the FBI, or the Secret Service. You go out last night? Yeah. Where'd you go? Nowhere. What'd you do? Nothing. Who were you with? Nobody. This guy, you couldn't get shit from him when he was 16. My daughter, my wife goes, you will teach Abby how to drive. I did. I took her out on Lawrence Avenue, and immediately she goes over the double yellow line. I go, Abby, can you stay on this side of the double yellow line? Then she blows a stop sign. I go, Abby, did you see the stop sign? She said, I can't do everything. <laughs> then she gets a little older, so things started to calm down a bit. Not really. She finds an apartment in New York City. She goes, oh, Dad, it's Abby. I said, yeah, I know it is. She goes, I found an apartment for $1,900 a month. I said, do you have a job? She goes, I knew you'd say something mean. <laughs> Within two seconds, my wife's on the phone. Why are you being mean to Abby? Now she's got a $2,400 apartment. In that law practice that I had, 
since my criminal law practice didn't go real well, I started a personal injury practice. That didn't go too well either, since I didn't know what I was doing. But I started to advertise. Advertising for personal injury lawyers works. What I did, I came up with a rap song. I might as well tell you, because they're going to find it and put it on TV. Here's how it went. Fall in the bathroom. Fall at home. Call attorney Bramnick from any phone. Cops kick your butt. Choke on a cert. Dial 1-800. I'd be hurt. <laughs> Teacher abuse you. Teacher abuse you by touching your feet. You get insulted by someone's tweet. Your kid gets scared by Ernie and Bert. Dial 1-800, I'd be hurt. <laughs> Not enough cheese on your pizza pie? Scary movie made you cry. <laughs> Falsely arrested by a 7-Eleven clerk? Dial 1-800, I'd be hurt. <laughs> that didn't go well either. <laughs> I, so what I wanted to show you, I brought all the laws that I have passed since I've been in the legislature. These are the most important common sense laws that have ever been ever enacted in the state of New Jersey. First, the Men's and Ladies Restroom Act of 2016. That requires all men's and ladies rooms to say men's or ladies. No silhouettes, because after four or five drinks, I cannot tell which is the man and which is the woman. My favorite law ever is the health spa, gymnasium, and workout law. This prohibits you, when you're working out, from moaning, groaning, and making all kinds of weird news noises while I'm trying to work out. I get it, Jack LaLanne. You're really working hard. Put a lid on it. And in addition, part B of this law is the men's locker room law. When you come in and you want to talk to me about the Constitution of the state of New Jersey, wrap a towel around yourself, Tarzan, okay? Because I ain't interested in talking to you like this. Okay there, Pops? Then I, then I have the Health Food Store Employee Act. That requires people who work in a health food store to look healthy. Because most of them look like shit. Then I have the Canadian, ca Canadian Geese Attitude Adjustment Act. With all due respect to my friends in Canada, train your goddamn geese to show a little respect to cars. They walk around like this, and they stop. Well, here's my message to President Trump. You want to build a wall? Build it around Canada. Keep the goddamn geese out of New Jersey. They're all over the damn place. They all have to go to squirrel school, because squirrels are still scared shit. And I got one other law. It's the DWI Cost Reduction Act. Instead of having all these stupid places where they stop and see if you're drunk, waste of money. All the troopers have to do is at 2 in the morning, go to the 7-Eleven. Anybody eating one of those hot dogs, they're drunk. They throw those guys out. And let me tell you, because we're out Mike Marino coming, I want to tell you one other thing about you people who run in government, because I am in the minority. These signs on the highway that rhyme, I like it. Click it or tick it. Know before you go. Throw the ca trash, pay the cash. We got a poet on a pension in Trenton. So I got a poem for this cat. Rose are red, violets are black. Stop all the bullshit and lower my tax. I'm John Brandon. Thanks so much. Yeah.